why have you decided to run for this particular race at this particular time? It's, uh, it's the most important question, and uh, it's the one that I love answering most, uh, because I'm not a politician. Um, I had no aspirations to be a politician. Uh, I've been a businessman for since I was 18 years old. You know, I've worked since I was 14, put myself through college uh, uh, to get a degree in economics, and then worked in, in a trade, meat and seafood. But late last year, I looked into our budget here in Clark County, uh, and I've been going to these county commission meetings. And what I have found is that every single opportunity that we have to raise taxes and spend more money, we take it and then we tell the community, this is for you. When most of the time it's really not for the community. There's a special interest involved. And, and I found out that our budget is $6.2 billion in Clark County, something that, uh, that I can't really grasp visually in my head. I, I think of what is $6.2 billion. Now we're talking Warren Buffett type money, uh, Bill Gates type money. It's a lot of money. So I did some searches. How many states in the United States have a $6.2 billion budget or more? Well, there's seven whole states that have a smaller budget than our county. So, well, that's maybe understandable for like a, a Montana or something. And then I looked at the uh, comparable counties, Maricopa County, Arizona, the Phoenix area, uh, is twice as large as Clark County. And their budget's $2 billion. But they have roads, they have police, they have schools, they have fire, and, and all of these other services. And I'm trying to wrap my head around why we have such a huge budget for such a relatively small uh, community. And a lot of it comes from waste, waste, fraud, and abuse that, uh, that nobody seems to be held accountable for. And I'll give you a couple of examples. We, uh, we had a new fuel tax passed uh, for transportation projects, which I can understand. But why isn't roads uh, the priority for the county government? $16 million went to a tortoise habitat. Is it worthwhile? Possibly, but why is that given priorities over schools? Why is that given priorities and then we say we don't have enough money for police? So our police are no longer to, going to go to accidents unless there's an injury. And now the police are expected to, to go to the strip and uh, make sure that every bottle is uh, plastic and you give fines now. It is now illegal to have a Snapple down on the strip. The bottle will cost you a, a fine. That's a poor use of our police force and I think we need to prioritize our budget with $6.2 billion, I think we can do better. And, uh, and from what I've seen of the, the county uh, commission, we don't have anybody with a, a different voice. It's 7 0 on every vote for the most part. And they do these things without looking into the community and asking them, is this what you want us to prioritize? Uh, because when we go to these meetings, and, and I show up at these county meetings with 100 people ready to say, no, don't you dare, and they back down. But if you miss a meeting or you don't bring enough people, they do whatever they want. And it just, to me, it's not a community that is being represented by our county commission. So when you ask why am I running, we need another voice. We need another face, somebody else to give the community's input instead of the special interest that, uh, that is running Clark County. And uh, I, feel, I feel very strongly about it and I don't think it, we're being uh, represented on the, on the commission. Sorry, that the screaming that you may hear is someone's uh, very interesting, probably Halloween-themed ringtone. Um, and mildly disturbing. We'll need to talk to Ron about that when we're off camera. Um, one question that we had uh, that, that was brought up earlier uh, involved a lot of the deals uh, about a potential stadium, either the city building it or the county building it. Uh, what is your general? Obviously you're not included in the specific discussions about those uh, line items now. But in general, what are your feelings about county funding for purposes of building an arena, um, uh, for purposes of a new sports team, or sure. for things of that nature? Uh, generally speaking, and I think I can get relatively specific when it comes to uh, uh, sports stadiums, uh, I'm against any county or city funds being used for a couple reasons. Number one, the league may be nonprofit, in other words, MLS or NFL, NBA, etc. They may be non, uh, for, uh, not for profit, but the teams are for profit. If somebody wants to build a stadium in Las Vegas in Clark County, I have no problem with that. I think they should get zoning. They should be allowed to build whatever they want. Uh, they should be allowed to buy a team and bring it to Las Vegas, assuming that the gambling aspect of it is taken care of. Um, but the county shouldn't be on the hook. The, the taxpayers should not have to fund something that they may not even want to go to. They may not even want it in their, uh, in their district. Um, 
But a team, somebody that owns a team should be able to go to Nike, should be able to go to Adidas or Under Armour or any of these companies and say, we have advertising available, would you like to help fund this project? And go that route. But as it is now, the county or the city, whoever is giving the, uh, the, the licensing for this, is also able to assign 501Cs for all of the concessions. Meaning if the Boy Scouts of America uh, get their concession stand, they get to sell the hot dogs or, or whatnot. And I think that in a free market, especially for a community project like a, uh, uh, like a stadium, that should be part of the revenue that goes to paying for those, uh, for those buildings, uh, especially now with the economy the way it is and jobs being the way, uh, the way it is. We're giving away too much to bring jobs, just like the Tesla deal. I love the fact that Tesla's coming to, to Nevada. I don't like the fact that every other small business or, or person in uh, Reno and in the state of Nevada is going to have to eventually make up the shortfall of tax money because we are giving 10 year and, and in some cases 20 year breaks on taxes. Uh, I spoke with a couple of assemblymen and, and state senators uh, just last week at a, a chamber event and they tried to sell me on, well, no, what we're gonna do is, and I asked at the end of it all, is it still on the backs of other people well, the society is picking it up to bring in the jobs. I said, okay, I understand that. But if it's good for Tesla, if it's good for Reno, why isn't it good for every other business to have those breaks? Let's lower, I just opened a business in January. I gotta tell you, that helped me make my decision to run for office. Because you have city permit, <laughs> fees, licenses, and basically punishments because I didn't wanna open a, 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 or lease an office. I wanted to work out of my home so I could build my, my business and I was told, well, you're gonna to have to pay a fee for that. To not have an office, I have to pay a fee? Yeah. And then you go to county, then state, and now federal tax ID, et cetera. We make it difficult for, and I'm not talking about uh, uh, somebody like the, the bosses I had. They're gonna survive and they're gonna thrive no matter what. They were great entrepreneurs, and I learned a lot from them. But not everybody has that drive. And if they wanna open a business and that stops them from doing it, that's a shame, and our community is losing out on that. So what ideas do you have to potentially um, minimize the red tape for other small business owners or individuals who want to be entrepreneurs I like yourself? I would give a three-year moratorium on all license fees. Let these people that want to open businesses, open their businesses, hire an extra person, don't have these onerous fees because that money goes to the county and the county ends up wasting it anyhow. So I would prioritize the budget, and that's the first thing, because what we end up doing, and I don't know if anybody here has spent the time to read our county budget, please don't even bother, because at the end of it, it doesn't matter. From what I'm told, the budget is, a, is an idea, and a thousand pages on your printer is a waste of ink if during these meetings, closed door meetings, the county commissioners are allowed to say, all right, well, I'll give you this if you give me that. Oh, by the way, we need a bathroom in my park and uh, it's a million and a half dollars, but I'll vote for your five and a half million dollar jogging track in your park. Come on, guys. That's not representing me uh, in my district. That's representing uh, the county commissioner and trying to get what she wants so she can run or he can run on a platform of look what I did. We wasted our money. I don't live in a million and a half dollar house. I'm pretty sure we don't need a million and a half dollar bathroom in, in a public park. Uh, we need to start prioritizing our budget, and start prioritizing the people in our community and not the special interest in getting uh, huge donations. Now, I don't have the numbers broken down for purposes of voter registration in um, uh, county districts, mm -hmm. but I'm assuming that, they're, that the Dems do have a rather significant edge. Almost 60% in, in uh, registered. Path. How do you plan on overcoming that just numerical disparity? Well, it's a two-pronged approach. The first is Susan Breger got 58% of her own primary. There are a lot of disaffected Democrats, and my party is signing up two to one Democrat to Republican coming over to the park. Uh, with that being said, as I walk the district, as I make phone calls, and as I meet people at uh, events like this, as well as chamber events and, and social events, I talk budget. That's my thing. My whole campaign is about our budget. And when I hear people say things like, well, why can't we have better schools in Clark County? And, well, you know, the lady that ran our schools, the school board, is now our county commissioner. It's a great question. I've been to debates, a handful of them, and she's never shown up. I would love a one-on-one -on -one or even uh, uh, two or three of us up here to be able to debate the issues and have her defend what she's spending her money on, our money on, in these uh, county commission meetings. 
because I don't find it representative of me or the people in, in my district uh, to have a tortoise habitat and to have the audacity to say, well, sometimes we spend money, you know, until somebody says something. You're our commissioner. You're supposed to be our voice to say something about this wasteful spending. And, it's, uh, and that was in the Las Vegas Sun in December of 2013 regarding the tortoise habitat and why she hadn't uh, uh, stopped the funding of that earlier. So, because now they're, they're sterilizing the, the tortoises. There's too many. So, it, to me, it, it's just a matter of there's no accountability. And, and it's across the way. It's not just Susan Greger. It's, it's the committee uh, and the county uh, committee as a whole. It's seven nothing votes, whereas if I'm on that county committee, I can look at every single one of them and I say, I dare you. I dare you to make that vote because I'm going to go tell Channel 3, 5, 8, and 13. I'm going to tell the Review Journal and the Sun. And they're going to, one of them will print that you're wasting our money. I want to be that voice of fiscal restraint, uh, of discipline. And, uh, and we don't have that. So to answer your question, how do I overcome a 60% Democrat district? I've got Democrats supporting me. I've got former Democratic uh, 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 officials that, that are uh, candidates supporting my campaign. I have Republicans supporting my campaign. I'm getting donations from both sides as well as uh, support and help to get the word out and, uh, and walk the district with me. And I have a puncher's chance and people ask me, come on, do you really have a chance? Yes. People are upset. People are getting angry. And with a low voter turnout, I don't need 40,000 votes. I can win with 19 to 20,000 votes. And that includes, you know, the independents and uh, uh, and, uh, you know, I was endorsed uh, early this, earlier this year by veterans in politics as well. And I speak to the people not as a group of veterans, uh, Asian, Hispanic, Latino women. Uh, I go to their chambers, the Chamber of Commerce, and they ask me questions. What can you do for our community? <coughs> well, I'm not going to do anything specific for one community versus another. I'm going to tell the whole community this is the fiscal restraint that we need in order to help all of us. Because I don't think it's fair to talk to Latinos about immigration when they care about schools. You know, it, it's not fair to pander to one group for one issue. And, uh, and that's how I would represent the district. I have a, a, a poor part of District uh, F, as well as the Ridges and, and Red Rock. So all of us need to be represented equally. And that's what I'm all about as a libertarian. The individual right is sovereign. And uh, you have to represent the individual, not groups. And I've been uh, running most of the questioning like I all is due. Anyone else want to jump in? Anyone else on the panel? Question. Yes, sir. If you don't win this time, mm -hmm. will you run it again? Again and again? I don't think so. This you is don't have the very... drive like Lincoln? Sorry? Do you have the drive like Lincoln? I have very ardent supporters. They are, they are very loud. They love uh, you know, helping, and I know that the community needs it. But I am $700,000 behind Susan Brager in raising money because MGM, the taxi cabs, uh, NV Energy, they're not supporting me. They're supporting who's looking out for, for their interest. And I don't think they would support me if I did win um, because I'm not here to do them any favors. That being said, would I run again? Maybe. I'm the vice chair of the Libertarian Party. I'm very community oriented and I want to represent the community. But this is a very difficult race. Uh, it's early morning until late at night, four or five uh, meetings every day with, with different groups. Um, I, I'm a businessman. I'm not a politician. I don't know if I would run again. I can't answer that. Uh, if, if we needed it and people wanted me to, if this race ends up being very close, maybe. But it, it comes down to the community. Are they calling for change? And I think they are. And I think this is the opportunity and this is the year. So basically, the only way for your voice to get heard is what the community, yes. bring an election, and having different form for people to hear. Absolutely. Now, if you're going to run for a chair, they're going to make changes. But yet, you, you are not even sure you're going to run next time if you lose this time. You're, you're a new face, mm -hmm. right? Yes. But next time around, people see you. That's true. Bob, he, he, he run, Robert, he run for governor. Mm -hmm. You know he don't have a chance, but he had been around for time and time again. Yes. That's what we need to see. With all due respect to Bob, in his, uh, in his experience 
and and, uh, and, and life where he is. Uh, I I need to get back to work if I do not win this election. I go back to my company. I start uh, you know really selling again. Um, this has taken a lot of time and a lot of personal money and energy and effort, and it's a tax not only on me, but my family. Um, I just can't say yes for sure, because this is one of those life-changing events. I've never done this before. It is, it is uh, eye-opening. I've never known how hard running a campaign is when you don't have big uh, donors, etc., doing all the work. County commission four years. Yes. I say it's four years. Well, you got four years to run. If right. you really honestly believe it, mm -hmm. that changes are needed, mm -hmm. you run the campaign for four years rather than four months. Wow. Makes a lot of difference. <laughs> it, uh, well, I, I, it's an everyday think, thing, uh, right? Uh, but it does take, a, we, we all see how busy candidates are and how it's difficult Absolutely. to get them in at various right. time slots, even uh, for us. I've seen plenty of judges. Yep. They got to yes. go three, four different functions. That's night. right. But there are sacrifices. So and I, they, I respect the fact that you have yeah. to balance, you know, your beliefs and, and wanting to help the community right. with your own family. And, and, right. and but as a businessman, you know, you got to put in every day. Not, That's right. Not that moment. Right. right. No, I agree. And I've been doing this since uh, early this year, February of this year, and and since last year, uh, taking over, you know, a, a leadership position in the party. Uh, I've made lots of inroads with Democrats and Republicans, as well as independents, uh, everybody from judges to uh, governor candidates, and I've seen the community of politicians, and there's a lot of good people. The problem is, I think, you run into a political machine, and it grinds you down, and it forces you to do what the leaders say, or you don't get the money to run a campaign the next time. Uh, that, I think, is the most difficult thing. You, you have to look for candidates that are out there because they're doing what the higher-ups asked them to do or told them to do in order to get the money. And that, you know, maybe county commission isn't the final stop for a lot of these politicians. Maybe they want to be mayor. Maybe they want to run for senate or assembly. I, I don't think I'd ever want to get that high in government. To me, that takes away from me being able to be in my community all the time. I don't want to live in Carson City or Washington. Uh, DC. I, uh, I so, want to give back to Las Vegas and Clark County. Right. So just to share with you that 